In this video, we will take a look at how to write a program for binary search. I am going to be implementing binary search by using a recursive function. So why am I going to use recursion? When we want to search for an element in binary search, we first decide whether we want to search for the element in the left or the right of the array. Once we make our decision, we only search half the array. And this process keeps repeating. As you can see, we are solving a main problem by using the solution of a simpler sub-problem. Or in this case, we are searching for an element in the entire array by only searching for that element in one half of the array. So instead of searching the entire array, we will perform our search on only half the array. When we want to search in half the array, instead of searching in the entire half of the array, we will perform our search on either the left or the right of the half array. So we will perform our search on only one fourth of the array. Like this, our problem size keeps reducing or the range in which we are performing our search keeps reducing. This keeps reducing until either we have found our element at the middle position and then we can stop searching and say we have found the element or we keep reducing the problem size until we only have one element left and then either that element could be the element we are searching for but if we only have one element left and even that element is not the element we are searching for we say that it cannot be found so we are going to be solving a main problem by using the solution of sub problems because of this we are going to use recursion in our binary search program so let's bring back the steps we wrote in the previous video so first let's define the function The function will return an integer because it will return the index at which an element was found. If the element is not found, it will return minus 1. Let's look at the parameters to the binary search. We will first have the array. I am taking it as an integer array for an example. Then I need the element which I am searching for. I'm going to call that x. Then I will need to define start and end for each call of the binary search. So I will also require start and end as my input parameters. So with this I have finished defining my function. So let's look at the cases one by one. The first step we do is we find the middle. So let me create a variable for the middle. And compute the middle. With this I get the value of the middle. Now there are four cases. If the array of middle is less than the element array of middle is greater than the element, array of middle is equal to the element, and then the last case when it is not found. So let's begin writing these four cases. So the first case was if array of middle is going to be less than the element. In that case, what we said was, we want to search to the right of the middle element. So we are going to perform a search.
So what would be our parameters? We want to perform the search on the same array. We are searching for the same element. We want to start our search at an index middle plus one. And we want to end our search in the same end index. So when we call the function again, we will be updating the start and end pointers. The result of this would be the result we would like to return. So we have dealt with this case. Let's look at the next case. If array of middle was greater than our element. In such a case, we would like to perform the binary search to the left of the middle element. So we will perform it on the same array with the same element and the start and the end indexes we are going to start at the same start but we are going to end at an index middle minus one. So if the element found at the middle is greater than the element we are searching for we will search in the left part of the array which begins in start and ends at middle minus one. Now we look at the other two cases. So the first one was if the array of middle is equal to the element. So if the array of middle is equal to the element, we know that the element has been found and we will return the index at which it was found. That is, we will return mid. Now the other case which we had was if it's going to be the last element. So if start is equal to end and if that element is not equal to the middle element then we say it is not found and we return minus one. Now you must be wondering why I have not specified the second condition here that that last element should not equal to the element we are searching for. If you see when we are going through our function if this was the last element then first we check whether the array of middle is equal to the element. So if the last element was the element we are searching for then we would have returned the index at which it could be found. The minute we come to a line after this if block we know that the middle element is not equal to the element which we are searching for and so when we write these statements we can be sure that the last element is not going to be the element we are searching for. Had that element been the last element then it would have already returned the middle. Now the last element is not equal to the element we are searching for and then we return minus one. If you see with this we have come to the end of our binary search algorithm. It goes in this order. Now the order in which I wrote these four if blocks is very important. So first in a recursive function we should have our base case. So what is the base case in the recursive function? It is that case in which we can give a definite answer. So the first few cases in our recursive function have to be those cases in which we should be able to return a definite answer. Only after these cases can we come to the recursion cases where we return a function call. So first we will check whether the middle element of the array is equal to the element we are searching for. If we have found it, immediately return that index. 
If we have not found it, only then we come to the next step. So, when we are over here, or when we start to continue the statements after this if block, we know for sure that the element we are searching for is not the element at the middle. Now we check whether it's the last element. So if it's the last element and we know that that element was not equal to the element we are searching for, we say that the element cannot be found and we return minus 1. Now that we have finished the two base cases or the two cases in which we give a definite answer, then we go to the next recursive cases. If array of middle was greater than index, then we search in the left of the array. If array of middle is less than index, then we search to the right of the array. After this, we can close our function. So this is how you write a program for the binary search algorithm using recursion. So the question may arise, why are we writing the base cases first and only then writing the recursion cases such as these? The answer is that whenever we start a recursive function, we first check whether we can give a definite answer. If we can give a definite answer, we will return that answer. Only when we are not able to ascertain the definite answer will we go for the recursion cases. So, in this case, which we check first, we can give a definite answer. In this case, which we check, we can give a definite answer. Only after we know that we, def we cannot give this definite answer, will we go for the recursion cases. So, in any recursive function, we must write the base cases first or the cases in which we can give an answer. So, the first thing we check when we enter a recursive function is, is this the case in which we can give the proper answer? Only when we can't give a definite answer will we have to go for the recursion cases. So, this is how you write binary search using a recursive function.